This video is about the economics of low-tech mushroom farming. Hey there, thanks for tuning in. In this video, I'll delve into the economics of low-tech mushroom farming. But before we dive in, if you like these videos, if you're keen to learn more about low-tech mushroom farming, do hit subscribe so you'd never miss out on one of these videos. So firstly, let's just look at what you'll get out of this video. So on the map here, you can see a slightly dated view of where the members of our low-tech mushroom farming community are based. And at the time of recording this, in 2020, there are over a thousand people putting this concept into practice in more than 60 countries. So can I, with any accuracy, point out the economics of low-tech mushroom farming to each and every situation and each and every person in each separate country? You know, somebody joined in Ghana recently, there's people in the US putting this into practice, a whole bunch of people in Australia, New Zealand and the UK. No, of course I can't do it with any particular accuracy, but what I can do is help out by exploring our cost basis, our cost structure, and the way they sit together, because the whole process will be very similar across the board, of course. So what I want to do in this video for you is to go through each and every single cost that features in our production system here in the UK. You see the process where you're based will be pretty similar, and this will give you a great understanding of what comes into play when looking at production costs of a kilogram or a pound of fresh mushrooms that you can then sell. And in particular, I'll be looking at oyster mushrooms, which are a great valuable crop, high value crop to grow. They're easy mushrooms to grow and they fetch a good price. Right, so let's get stuck in. So for these numbers that I'm going to show you later on, to make sense, it's worth taking a little time to consider our current setup. You know, these impact on the, on the costs of running a farm and the way you make your substrate can be different. So it's worth taking a moment. You could take a full farm tour in a separate video that I'll put a link to in this video. So the point here, of course, is that you need to understand that the way you set up has an impact on your costs. But we'll come back to the costs in a little bit. So just to remind you that the whatever the way you're set up, it's always the same process when it comes to low-tech mushroom farming. There are three main stages. So you've got your mixing stage, essentially where you just go through the process of introducing the mycelium to the food you're going to give it to thrive on and to grow on. Then you've got the incubation stage, and that is the stage where it actually happens. So that's where the mycelium start to spread across the substrate you gave it, across the food you essentially give it. And then finally, there's the fruiting stage, of course. There's a separate video on how much it costs to set up this stage. Um, and if you want to read more about the elements, I'd suggest you just pause the video um, or just go and check the video that I'll link to. But in short, a setup can cost anything from a hundred dollars for a hobby grower to as much as a hundred thousand dollars for a farm growing 1500 kilograms or about 3000 pounds each week. A farm like that will have multiple grow rooms and will be housed on say 5000 square feet employing four to five people full time. That's not the kind of setup we've got here. It's a much smaller setup and I'll come back to that in a minute. Um, the way that we're set up and the numbers that I'm going to show you in a minute um, is an example of producing 50 kilograms each week. So that is, you need to time these by about 2.2 to get the pounds number. So that is about 110 pounds each week. And they will be cultivated in six kilogram column bags. You can see, you can see some of those fruiting on your screen right now. That's the kind of size bag that we'll use in this example. And of course, you don't need to use these growing bags. You can choose buckets instead as well, but this is the one that the numbers are, will be based on. Yield can vary depending on the substrate you use as well as the strain you use. And that's the same with biological efficiency. Biological efficiency is a way to calculate the effectiveness of a mushroom strain and the substrate combination. So the effectiveness of the mushroom strain and the kind of food that you chose to give it. In short, it kind of tells you what weight of fresh mushrooms you get for the dry weight of substrate you introduce at the start of the process. There are certain things you can do to improve biological efficiency and some growers get up to 175%. I'm not going to delve right into biological efficiency, but it's important 
for you to understand, for the numbers to make sense, that what we're assuming as a rule of thumb is that you get 25% of the wet weight of your bags in fresh mushrooms. So for instance, if you have a six kilogram bag of substrate that you fruit, you get a one and a half kilograms of fresh mushrooms. Another qualifier I wanted to make is of course the sales price and the sales price can vary hugely from country to country but also within a country. So I've heard stories of oyster mushrooms being sold for as high a price as £30 a kilogram on certain food markets in London where lots of foodies go to explore different kinds of really high quality fresh produce. We're in the southwest here in the UK and we keep it pretty simple. So orders of more than five kilograms, which is about 12 pounds, get 10 pounds per kilogram. Anything less is 12 pounds per kilogram, which equates to about $20 per kilogram or about $9 per pound. Now, if we look across the pond, so I spoke to a mushroom consultant that we have a partnership with, and he mentions that in California, he typically sells at about 16 dollars per pound and that's almost double the price that I just mentioned that we fetch here. For a whole number of reasons prices are higher still in areas of the world like Australia and New Zealand. So bear that in mind when you start to look at the numbers that I'm going to show you next. So do bear in mind that your cost might be slightly different as well as the price you fetch on the market might be slightly different but chances are that the structure so the percentages and the way it stacks up will be very, very similar. Right, so with all that said, this process is beautifully simple, of course, and the mushrooms do most of the work for you if you give them the right conditions. So the key inputs are your thyme, the spawn, and other materials such as chopped straw, some lime, potentially some pelletized material too. The main running costs that will be covered for the whole process that need to be covered for the whole process of mixing, incubation, as well as fruiting will be electricity, water and some other consumables like cleaning products because mushrooms do want to fruit in a clean healthy environment um, otherwise they'll struggle to compete with the organisms but that said you'll see that none of it is out of the ordinary none of it is prohibitive now let's look specifically at what these are so you can get a good feel for them and how to stack them up as a percentage or how they stack up as a percentage of your production costs. Right, so in this chart here, so once again to remind you, this is based on about 50 kilograms a week in six kilogram bags with that rule of thumb that you get 25% of the wet weight of your mushroom substrate. Right, so let's look at it. Oyster mushroom grains, um, just so you understand this chart, I've split it out in the material cost as well as the running cost. So let's talk about the material cost first. And they're also ordered in um, from largest to smallest. So oyster mushroom grain spawn, that comes to about 83 pence. I'm going to stick with pounds here only because once again, the cost of you purchasing spawn in, for instance, New Zealand, Australia and the US will be completely different. And it doesn't entirely make sense in this case to also translate it to that currency because of that reason. So, right, 83%, 83p for one kilogram of mushroom with fresh output. So that's about 40% of the total. And I've, uh, we use a 7% inoculation rate. So 7% of the weight of the bag is grain spawn. And then in the incubation stage, it just grows through this whole bag until it's really nice and white. Chopped straw then, that's another fairly significant cost at 33p. Lay flat tubing, so if you remember seeing those bags fruiting, what you see the plastic around, that's actually lay flat tubing, which is typically used in air conditioning systems. There's some pelleted supplements. So for instance, you can use coffee, alfalfa, sugar beet, um, we tend to use some coffee pellets because we love the concept of um, using coffee in that way. Then there's hydrated lime, you see that's 2p. So like I said, none of it is particularly prohibitive. Your main costs will be straw and spawn here. But to give you the overview that I've promised, we've got it in here. So that comes in at about 2p and that hydrated lime is used for the pasteurization process. And then we've got some cable ties, which um, we use to tie the bags up. I mentioned the chart is split in two elements, so these material costs, and let's look at the running costs next. So 
electricity, we've got a controlled environment here where we regulate the humidity as well as the fresh air and lights and all of those have got an electricity need of course but none of it is as high as you might expect. Um, this comes in at about 40p, 40 pence per kilogram of fresh mushrooms at the end of the process. Water is also um, an element here and that's 4 pence per kilogram and then cleaning consumables so think about um, um, isopropyl alcohol or bleach and those sorts of things just to keep a clean farm that comes to about three pence. So if you total all of this up you've got one um, element which is about 78% of the running um, of the costs which is one pound 64 and then the other part is 22% which comes to 74 pence which means that if you total those up it's about two pounds and 11 pence per fresh kilogram of mushroom um, that you can then sell. So just to remind you, we sell them at 10 pounds or 12 pounds, depending on the size of the order. So this is obviously one way of presenting the information. We don't all take information like that. So what I've also done is have the breakdown of costs in a pie chart here, where you can see the elements. So I've got the um, running costs are in the, in the light green, electricity, water, cleaning. Just to remind you, that's about a fifth of the, um, the total production cost. And then the other costs here, so you can see spawn, that's the, um, the, big, the big dark green part, and then straw tubing, and then it goes down to in the elements of where it's only 1% of your um, cost. So, what does this mean then? All told, excluding your own time, with a low-tech mushroom farming course, you should be able to obtain a production cost of around £2 per kilogram. And I know I told you that you shouldn't really apply a conversion rate straight away but just to give you some sense of what that means in dollars that's under three dollars per kilogram or around one dollar twenty five per pound of mushrooms i hasten to add that to assess the financial viability of your own setup like that that's a job i'll leave for you but this should give you a great point to start from because like i said the process is very similar and you can now download the guide on how to set up a low-tech mushroom farm that I'll put below this video to take the next step if you want to explore this any further. Now there is of course another cost that we didn't include in this breakdown here which is a fairly major one and that is the cost of your time input whether it's you know the amount you want to be paid for the hours that you put in or whether it's uh, possibly employing somebody else to help you out with production this is going to be another major cost input and for some people you know, the make or break as to whether it's going to stack up to grow mushrooms. So you're probably wondering why we didn't include it here in this uh, breakdown of the economics of mushroom production. And the main reason for that is that even more than all of the other costs that we have mentioned, the cost of labor can vary hugely to the point where really it doesn't make sense for us to put this figure in here because it w could be misleading for people to uh, base their own calculations off of it. So I just want to briefly discuss some of the things around the, the cost of your time input um, so that you have that as something to add on to what we, Eric has just discussed there. So obviously when you've got a smaller scale setup your time input per kilos of mushrooms output tends to be much larger. So just to give you a practical example here um, if you have a very small mushroom production of say five kilos a week um, the amount of time that you're going to spend cleaning and packing things away after your production and possibly like cleaning in your fruiting room on a regular basis is going to be, let's just say, two hours a week you might spend doing that. And whereas you may have a production of 50 kilos a week, so that's 10 times bigger, and you're probably only then going to be spending three hours a week doing the same task. So although your production is 10 times bigger, your um, time input for that one particular task is, is just three hours rather than two hours. So um, you can see that this kind of cost gets almost impossible to extrapolate and to give you a clear figure on based on you know the scale of your production. Now obviously we did try to do that in this example here. Eric mentioned that we based all these costs off of a 50 kilograms of mushroom a week output and we did consider possible the possibility of including the the staff wages that we pay at the farm here in this but it, again it would have been really misleading because on our farm we don't just produce the mushrooms we also uh, make mushroom kits 
we send substrate to a chain of hotels um, and we also run workshops here. So our, our farm, we have three members of staff who each work 18 hours a week, um, but they're not spending all that time on the fresh mushroom production and, and any given day will include some tasks for fresh production alongside uh, mushroom kit production, or it might be uh, packing up kits or dispatching kits, uh, planning for workshops, um, talking with our substrate customers. So it's not really accurate for us to include those figures in here. Uh, we actually talked about this in a separate video, which I'll link to up above here, where we just discuss um, our mushroom business and how we earn over $200,000 a year uh, through a range of different um, farm outputs like that. I think what we'll do is we'll make a separate video on this particular topic in the future where we uh, break down how much time input goes into each different stage of mushroom production and it will help you to get a better understanding of that. But for today's video, we just wanted to focus purely on the inputs, the raw material inputs uh, and some of the overheads that go into it. And that hopefully gives you some idea of the production costs for growing oyster mushrooms. All right, that's it for today. I really hope you enjoyed the video. And if you want to learn a little bit more, do check out the link below. You can find an ebook on how to grow mushrooms, how to set up a low tech mushroom farm. Thanks a lot for watching. Do subscribe to the channel and we'll see you in the next video.